You know, looking back at the video games has made me think about all the albums I used to listen to quite fondly. And how distinctly I remember parts of my life because of the album I was listening to. And I'm sure everyone's like that. You know, they, they have some music that reminds them of a certain part of their life. Or they remember what happened around when because of, the, you know, a music CD they had. But it was more exaggerated for me because I, I, I lived middle class, I'm going to say. Like lower middle class, middle class-ish. I had some nice things, but I didn't have everything nice, and I didn't, you know, like, get to buy CDs often and all this cool stuff. Um, I didn't even really have a CD player until quite more recently in my teenage years, probably and when I was, like, 14, I got a CD player, and everyone had them, like, you know, when they were, like, 10 or something, they had, like, you know, at least a little radio in there, like a, a radio CD player in their room. But my first CD that I remember owning, that was a full album, um, was Green Day's American Idiot. And my friend had burned it for me, so, you know, it wasn't, I didn't buy it. I would eventually go back out and buy it, but that was the first one I remember owning. And it was a combination of me having that, um, what was it, was it, I think it was a self-titled Gorillaz album that I had first. I believe so. It was that and American Idiot that I remember having, and some other burned CDs with, like, mixes, but... Because I... I learned the entirety of American Idiot and most of the Green Day's, or most of the, sorry, the Gorillaz's debut album on guitar. Um, you know, even though the Gorillaz was a bunch of samples and mostly keys, you know, they had some guitar driven songs, but I learned like all the, you know, like little melodies here and there from songs. Um, but those influenced my middle school years heavily, um, as well as Demon Days. Um, Demon Days came out when I was probably in 8th grade, I think. Um, I think I was in 8th, 7th or 8th grade when it came out. Uh, I just remember because me and my friends would, I was chatting with one of my other, with my, you know, my middle school girlfriend at the time, which is basically, we were all just, who the fuck cares? Just kids being dumb, but, um, we were, I remember talking about how crazy Demon Days was and like we were like oh did you hear it's like yeah but did you hear fuck that, that song White Light oh my god it's so intense you know all that stuff and uh, it was just it was a good time um I look back at those days fondly and it's just that that music I a lot of people consider it kind of cheesy. Not not the Gorillaz, but like Green Day. Um, Franz Ferdinand was another one I listened to a lot around that time. Their first studio album. Um, was a self-titled album, I assume. And I listened to that a lot. And a lot of people consider that kind of cheesy now. Like, you know, Green Day's American Idiot. Um, I still hold that album in very high regards. You know, even as over-the-top political as it is. You know, who, but... That's that's a sign that that's a mu that's the music you know that's what Green Day's done that's what that's what they do um, punk music in general you know even though Green Day's more pop punk alternative rock punk um, they're always political but I really identified with a lot of some of the songs and just like not really identified but like I could I could feel the emotion in it. Um, and at around the end of 8th grade was when I got introduced to Muse and mind you this was um, 
it was basically one song that someone told me about, and it was Plug In Baby, and I think, and I remember hearing that at first, not really knowing um, that was Muse, and I remember hearing Supermassive Black Hole, because I think Black Holes and Revelations had come out pretty recently, and I was like, man, this song fucking rocks, and, you know, in, in my high school years, the albums that come to mind immediately were, uh, were Muse's Black Holes and Revelations, and their other album, Origin of Symmetry, that I had found. Um, and lots of Mastodon and Scale the Summit, specifically Blood Mountain, Leviathan, and Crack the Sky by Mastodon, which is kind of like half their discography, but, you know, it was, it was, it was a combination of those. They all bled into each other. They were all like one cohesive thing for me, and, um, a lot of that shaped my high school years and, like, my my outlook. I was, I, I wasn't edgy, but it solidified my spot as, like, the other kid, like, the other group of kids that were kind of nerdy. They were into anime and stuff, and they were, we, we, we were the weird kids, but not the strange, strange kids that I've made fun of. I've touched on that recently, in another, in the first one, I believe, in the first sock drawer. Um, I touched on that, but it, it, it's, there's really nothing more to explain, I guess, but yeah, I was trying to, but, you know, those, thinking back, it's like, I can attest so many memories to songs and all that stuff, and I can tell when my, when my song, you know, my, my listening started to grow, um, because... I'll hear a song now, or the name of an artist, and you know, they'll be doing modern stuff, but my mind instantly goes back to the times, like, you know, I'll hear, mm, let's say, let's say any, any Raconteur song, or Jack White, White Stripes, I'll, I'll say, I'm um, steady as she goes, you know, and my mind goes immediately to the summer of 2009, when... I was playing with my friends, I was play, playing music in the garage with my friends, and we were playing in, in my, uh, yeah, it was my, it was my house, it was the last house I lived in with my family, um, and we were jamming all these songs, you know, I just remember it being like fucking 80, 85 outside, maybe even 90, it was probably 90, it was Houston summer, it was probably like 90, and we had like two fans going in the garage, and there's some videos on YouTube, there's a couple videos on YouTube of me playing, I was pretty, pretty shitty, I was pretty bad, and I just had this huge head, like I was cool, and fucking playing guitar, fucking being awesome, but I was pretty bad at the time, and I just, that, that feeling immediately comes back full force, like someone snapped their fingers and just hit me in the head with it, and, but that happens so often, and I know I'm not the only one, but it's just like, it, I, I'm not the only one this happens to, or I, I assume I'm not, but it's just like, it feels good that that can happen, and that I know where I've gotten to, and I can map this, this thing, and you know, I, I, I've taken a dive back in, you know, my music history and how I chose to be a musician in that path of my art, um, but, you know, it's, fr from a standpoint of, like, where my music tastes have gone and me listening to music has gone, yeah, I'm glad I can look back and see, pinpoint exactly what was going on, I can pinpoint this to to a time where I'm like, yep, I specifically remember this year, this day, this, you know, this, uh, this, this season, because, uh, also as I joke, and we joke about in Texas, and as many people say, like, you get two seasons in Houston, that's summer, and that's winter, but then some days you'll get all four seasons in a day. Like, it'll be fucking 30 inside, 30 outside in the morning, 
it'll be 85 at around like fucking 11. It'll hit 3 p.m. And it'll be like, you know, brisk, brisk like 60 or something. Not three, I'd say more about four. And then we get like nighttime where it's like a springtime breeze of like, you know, 72. But anyways, um, but I can attribute some of these things to some days, like listening to I Belong to You from Muse's Resistance album, you know, leaving the high school premises for the last time as my bus pulls up or the, the, you know, metro bus pulls up and I look at my school and I'm hearing the, this, the nice, um, it's not a sax, I want to say it's an oboe, or I can't remember what, what instrument is doing this, it's a, it's a, I think it's a woodwind doing a solo on I Belong to You, and I sit down, I had just played uh, at the talent show earlier that year too, or earlier that day, in that year, and I was like, that's the last time I'm going to see this school, and it was, and I remember listening to that song, um, I remember all that. Muse was awesome. Muse and the Bravery were a huge part of my, uh, huge part of my life. I, I took a lot of inspirations from some of those songs to how I, how I live and like. People, t- Muse is huge for me. And like you know, Matt has a lot of, uh, he has a lot of weird, oddly, like he, he, if if you listen to Muse, you know he he's just. He has a lot of strange lyrics, but oddly, some of them have like a sort of an upside to it. Um, when they don't, they certainly don't. Like when you get into songs like "The Small Print," and "Sing for Absolution," and stuff, um, they're just about one note. You know, butterflies and hurricanes about the world ending and all that stuff. But then you get to some songs where it's like pretty optimistic or he's describing some dystopian future you know i don't know it's it's hard but hard to explain but it and then the bravery too how there's always like this they'll 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 be singing about something so distantly but they're remembering the good times of it and i think that's where i get a lot of my optimism from it's like I don't I don't dwell too much on these negative things because of how music has shaped me to think the music I listen to um I don't know I don't know where I was going with this I'm kind of rambling at this point <sighs> but yeah since then I feel like my my tastes have kind of, they, they've grown. I, I listen to more music now than I definitely did in high school. But, like, the mainstays of my playlist are all the things I've heard from around that time. And even though some new ones have found my, their way onto my lists, it's just, I like these songs that make me feel something and remember this. And I think that's a lot of what, you know, my parents or parents in general do and why they listen to like you know Floyd and Zepp or something and there's songs that invoke a memory for them and a feeling and these songs do that for me and it's nice to look back and see what did it mm-hmm. 